Good morning, Kitchissippi. It is Friday, August the 29th, a bit of a nip in the air. This is a video version of the 402nd Kitchissippi Ward Weekly Newsletter. There's lots more information about the various updates we'll discuss in the newsletter to which you can subscribe at kitchissippiward.ca. Before I jump into some of those updates, I'll just pass on. September 1st is right around the corner. That always kind of feels like the, the first of the new year to me. Uh, and as people return to their work and their school routines, there is a, an increase in the volume of calls and uh, emails coming into my office. Uh, a reminder, uh, as I've asked before, that for urgent matters, please consider making 311 your first call for things like hazards in the road or for potholes or for urgent graffiti cleanup. Uh, my office is not set up as a call center. We can miss your note sometimes for several days um, and uh, by writing to me rather than calling 311 that can significantly delay the city's response. Um, I do recommend calling 311. If they're busy use their callback feature to make sure that you're not waiting on hold forever. And secondly uh, just a reminder not that I uh, suspect I need to remind anyone kids are back to school now. Um, please as you're driving around one of the biggest pressures I hear about in safety concerns is the behavior at intersections. When you come to an intersection, if you're going to make a right on red or make a right at a stop sign, please come to a complete stop. And uh, another thing I hear a lot about is people pressuring pedestrians as they're trying to beat the yellow, making things like left turns. Um, please be thoughtful and considerate at the intersections. Uh, I know that traffic is congested. I know that it's slow, but that pressure on the pedestrians at intersections with right turns behaviors around yellow lights, behaviors around stop lights, stop signs is problematic. Let's make sure that everyone has a safe school year. Uh, so into the updates, I do have my pop-up office hours rescheduled. Those are going to be held on um, September the 5th from 2 until 5 at Westboro Books. Uh, sorry for the last minute cancellation of those other ones and thank you very much for the uh, kind words in response to uh, my cancellation notice. Uh, I do feel much better on September 5th. We'll uh, have a redo on those pop-up office hours at Westboro Books 2 to 5. Those are an opportunity to come by anytime during those hours without appointment. Chat with me one-on-one -on -one about whatever's on your mind. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people are going to pay attention this week. I'm posting the landscaping plans for our portion of the LRT Stage 2 reconstruction, um, the, the post-construction period, and how they're going to replant trees. I know a lot of you, my office, I have been waiting uh, quite a while for that. I now have the document. It is very detailed. Uh, I've posted it on the website. It's also, I think, the first opportunity I've had to see you know, some of the final designs for crosswalks and for or, uh, cycling and pedestrian paths. That document is really um, worth a look. Take a, take a look at the link that I provided in the newsletter. A reminder that on September the 30th, the three item limit will begin with respect to waste collection. You'll be able to throw out um, only up to three 140 liter bins. Uh, those big container bins from uh, the, the round ones, the Rubbermaids from Canadian Tire are about 120 liters. So you'll be limited um, starting September 30th to throwing three of those out with uh, waste that is destined for the landfill. Uh, if you take a look at the link in the newsletter online, there's more information about how that's calculated, uh, how the city will be treating that through a bit of a city, um, a transition zone. Take a look in the newsletter. As I mentioned last week, there is a household hazardous waste depot that is coming up on Sunday, September the 8th. That'll be from 8 until 4. Uh, so bring your household hazardous waste, not including electronic waste, to Chinese Pasture. I know those depots are always very popular. People wait for them. It's coming up. Um, uh, the Commanda Bridge, uh, they continue to work on that, uh, that bridge rehabilitation, uh, of which the, uh, the building of the multi-use connection was just a part. Uh, there are two of six planned uh, closures coming up on that, of which you'll want to be aware if you use that bridge with any frequency. So on Wednesday, September the 4th, and Friday, September the 6th, uh, there is going to be a closure of the north span of the bridge from 7 
a.m. until 10 p.m. So you won't be able to cross over to Gatineau on those days. Those are the first two of six planned closures. Uh, committee of Adjustment is hopping. I'm getting back up to speed after my uh, holidays. We know that that single application is coming for 388 Richmond Road. That's uh, where McDonald's is asking for a variance to be permitted to have zero parking. We do now have the uh, staff report on that. Staff uh, at the city and the planning department have expressed no concerns with that application. Panel one is going to meet again on September the 18th. I think uh, two relatively uncontentious applications, both of which are um, uh, consents for severances uh, to establish separate ownerships for semi-detached properties that are going in there. One is at 531, 533 Broadhead, the other at 461 Tweedsmuir. <coughs> And I've also just received uh, this morning the decisions from the committee's August the 21st meeting at the old Granite Club, uh, that's 2026 Scott. The application to um, lower the height at which that pedestrian connection between the two towers is and to make it a shorter connection from what was zoned for uh, was approved. Um, and the applications at 130 Kenilworth and at 372A Holland were adjourned. Those won't be heard now until um, October the 2nd. <coughs> and another reminder, the 2025 budget consultations are underway. Uh, the city is inviting residents to complete a short poll on Engage Ottawa to identify their priorities for the 2025 draft budget. I haven't yet started talking to some of my colleagues in the adjoining wards. I'm sure we'll have a, a ward budget forum as always, and I'll have details to share about that in the newsletter. Uh, in the community, the Taste of Wellington Festival, of which I know many of you eagerly um, await every year is going to be on September the 21st. I've got a link to uh, that in the newsletter. Uh, there will be sidewalk sales, food samples, which is I know the um, uh, popular part of that, demos, kids activities, live music and much more. Again, the link is in the newsletter and you can follow the Wellington West BIA on Instagram to be kept abreast of developments as uh, those become available. The Hintonburg Community Association is hosting its annual general meeting. That will be on September the 26th in the evening. As usually, um, they'll have an open forum in the um, for, uh, last part of that meeting. You do need to be a member in order to be able to vote, and uh, I'll be available at that meeting to answer any questions as usual. Uh, and another note uh, with respect to the September the 28th Kidical Mass Ride for our kids, the uh, not-for-profit grassroots organization seeking uh, safer transportation for kids is hosting a mass ride. It'll be on September the 28th. They're going to meet at 9.30 in the morning and have a mass ride through the Mechanicsville area. Lots more information in the link I provided in the newsletter. Our committee and council work uh, continues to ramp up. Uh, the next meeting uh, will be the Agricultural and Rural Affairs Committee. They're going to meet on September the 5th with a report on how uh, staff intend or recommend we implement uh, the Provincial Bill 185. Uh, that is um, also going to come to the Planning and Housing Committee on September the 11th. Uh, that's a um, um, uh, a fairly comprehensive bill that establishes things like new timelines and de uh, development review processes. Uh, very interesting for those who follow uh, such things closely. Uh, there are some fairly routine rezonings that arise from severances on Fourth Line Road and on Moody. There's a rezoning being sought to permit a waste processing and transfer facility for the transfer and processing of inert soils at 4380 Trail Road. And there's also an omnibus official plan amendment uh, that's being done to adjust the boundaries and status of several existing wetlands in the rural area, reflecting the recent updates published by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. So you can see all of those items on the committee agenda at the link I've provided in the newsletter. The Built Heritage Committee is going to meet on September the 10th. In our ward, that designation for 50 Carruthers is coming back to the Heritage Committee. Uh, the landowner did not have an opportunity or or scheduling that didn't permit an opportunity to participate in our original <coughs> Heritage Committee meeting. Uh, council kicked that back to committee so that uh, she can participate. Uh, in the last time that was heard, we recommended it uh, for designation as a heritage building. We'll see how that turns out after hearing from the landowner. Uh, there are also going to be um, 
appeals uh, under the statutory right that they have by the owners at 149, 156, 198, 217 Rito of recent uh, heritage designations at those properties. Staff have recommended that uh, committee and council stay the course on designating those. There's an application to demolish on St. Patrick as well as at Seven Crescent Road, which I think is in um, uh, Rockliffe or New Edinburgh. There's a proposed heritage designation at 200 Fifth Avenue, 123 Metcalf, and a big one at the corners of uh, Cantin, MacArthur, Dupuis, and Montréal. Um, there's also an update on the Heritage Grant Program. We've been looking at how to evolve that program uh, with, uh, you know, with the, the budget that we have for it. Uh, so we'll hear how staff recommend we um, change that program. So you can see the full Heritage Committee agenda at the link that I've provided in the newsletter. And then finally in the newsletter, I've got the latest from the Ottawa Public Library, our precious Rosemount branch. Uh, they are full of activities. Uh, they've got uh, an opportunity for teen volunteers for their Reading Buddy program. There is um, tips and techniques for better photographs, fun with fonts, the art and science of topography, uh, how to buy a PC. There's a new program at um, Rosemount Library, the Memory Cafe. Uh, for uh, persons with dementia, their care partners and families. Uh, and of course, their ongoing programs, baby time, family story time, tween gaming, the French conversation group, the Rosemount knitting group, the English conversation group, the Rosemount writing collective, and more. So uh, that's the newsletter for this week. Uh, next week is a very busy weekend for me in the office. Uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to uh, chat with you about how uh, Kitchissippi is coming along. And uh, I hope you have a great week. Thank you very much for watching.